All right, everyone. So we're back here again. And before we start off, let's talk a little bit about design. You know, I'm not going to be drawing out, you know, some picture uh, of the website. Um, sometimes students ask, well, Mark, how do you design things? Well, uh, in this case here, our app is very small. And, and we're just going to show a few different components, like we like could add products to a cart and uh, or a wish list and then um, display them on the screen. And so, you know, here's a cool website to use as reference just to keep in the back of your head. This is harrys.com and its current state and form. And, you know, I just thought the idea of showing a few products here, maybe having a wish list somewhere uh, would be a, a good first website to work on. And so we're not going to design anything out. We're just going to uh, get to it. And Bootstrap will carry us a lot of the way with some nice designs. Uh, so uh, that's great. And so what is the first thing we want to build? Well, we know that we're going to need to be able to interface with the server and download data. So why not get that out of the way first? Let's get the behind the scenes networking code uh, out of the way so we can actually download information. So and also one, one thing to note is that you'd want to delete this, uh, these comments uh, in a live application. Um, you know, just no, no need to have that stuff in there. So. Let's look at our folders here. So we've got a public folder, which hosts our public files. We're not gonna really mess with that at all anymore. And uh, the important folder is the source here. And there's a few things I wanna do. I wanna do some uh, cleanup here. I don't like them all being in the same thing. I wanna put them into folders that are categorized uh, by their components. So in the source folder, I'm gonna do a new folder. And we're gonna call this app. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna show this in the finder here. That's not what I wanted. I want to show source in the finder. And what I want to do is I want to take app.js, the test file, and the app.css, and the logo, and put it here in the app. One thing we did not talk about is the, uh, the test file. So if we look over here in the uh, source app, there's a test file. This is for running unit tests, which is out of the scope of uh, this course and this section here, but uh, it is important to learn how to unit test. And what unit tests are, it, it's writing code that tests your code. Okay, uh, and a short example before we move on here is you could write a function that calculates the area of some type of rectangle, right? Now, that's great. You, you put some numbers in it and it works, but let's say later down the line, uh, somebody uh, another programmer modifies your function, like forget what it's supposed to do, and, and all of a sudden it's calculating the formula for a triangle, and so you're getting inconsistent results. Well, what a unit test will do is it will run, every time you make a code change, you can have it run, and then it'll run some tests saying, okay, these numbers should be equal to this if I'm putting in a square or a rectangle, and it would match out, but if someone had changed the code, put something wrong in the actual function, your test would then fail and say, hey, something's wrong, this is no longer working, and then the boss or you would know that somebody's modified the code and made it incorrect. And so it helps create very robust and reliable code bases. But again, it is out of the scope of what we're doing here. Uh, but we'll just leave it in uh, just because so we can look at it later if we want to. Okay, so we've got an app folder. I'm going to create folders uh, and separate them by components. Uh, in fact, um, I'm going to make this lowercase actually. I'm going to rename it to lowercase app. I keep all my files uh, lowercase. Well, We'll make the next ones lowercase. It's, it's, it's griping at me here, but I don't typically make things uppercase like this. This is what this particular project chose to do, but I find it easier when things are, are lowercase to work with. So we've got our app folder. Some things probably have to be relocated here. Let's see. No, logo looks good. App CSS. This is all going to be fine. It's the index.js. Uh, it's no longer available in the same directory. So all we have to do is go into the app folder and then get the app.js like so. And this is all looking good. I'm going to change this from JavaScript to JSX so it looks better. I guess it didn't really do much at all, but um, it was on JavaScript there. Okay, so we've got our files moved. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to create a folder in the source called services. We're going to call this services. And these would be things that uh, provide services to our application, something we can use again and again. It's not a component, but it's actually some type of code or operation. It's not uh, facing the user visually. It's behind the scenes. And in services, I'm going to create a new file, and we are going to call this http-service.js. And in this service, what we're going to do is we're going to use the code to communicate with our API. And we should probably test out our API first to make sure it's working. 
So I'm just opening up Postman here. This is the tool I use to make HTTP requests. It's free, uh, available uh, as a Google Chrome extension or a direct download. Okay, so our server's on port 3004, and we're looking for slash products or product. And so if I click send, we get three products here. So this URL is definitely the URL we want to use. Localhost 3004 slash product, and it's definitely working. So good. So what we want to do is in, install a package that's going to allow us to make those uh, web requests, OK? The package is called whatwg-fetch. And I know it sounds weird, but this is a, a very, very popular package for making uh, requests, web requests uh, on the front end, meaning like, uh, like web apps like React or, or, um, or otherwise. You know, So we're going to open our terminal here. And we're going to make sure that we're in our project. So I'm going to open up a new tab. Turn on my note here. Uh, and so we're in Swag Shop Web. This is looking good. So we're going to do npm install dash dash save what wg dash fetch. OK. And this, this is a library that makes web requests for us. It, rest, it goes on top of the, uh, the standard vanilla JavaScript XML HTTP request. Uh, and uh, it, it does all the, the heavy lifting for us. It has some nice callback functions. OK. So we're going to install that now. OK, great. So this is looking good. So the next thing to do is actually implement the code. So first things first, in order to use it, we need to import it. OK, so we're going to import what wg-fetch. Now you're probably wondering, well, why didn't I, why didn't I do this? Import you know, fetch from, uh, or you know, from something like this, or yeah, why didn't I do something like that, or even make a variable at all? Well, the reason why is when, you, when we import this uh, fetch, module uh, it actually is ready to be used right away it, it it's just makes it publicly available uh, and that's just the way that they implemented it so there's no need to store it in a variable because we'll call it directly all right so what we're going to do is create a class and this is uh, a javascript es6 class okay these don't exist in regular javascript so if you've been programming in the regular vanilla old school javascript um, these don't exist this is new uh, with the es6 which you should be learning okay we're not covering ES6 in depth, but I will explain the things as I'm doing them. So we're going to create a new class called HTTP service, like so. And a class is is kind of like a it's kind of like a function object when you made when you would make functions with a constructor, okay, a, a, a constructor, a function constructor object. That's kind of what we're doing here. This is a reusable class, um, but it makes more sense versus using a function, right? It makes more sense to call it a class. So what we're going to do is we want to create uh, a function in this class that <coughs> we want to create a function in this class that fetches a list of products from the API. So let's create that function now. It's called get products. Okay. And if you're brand new to ES6, this probably looks really funky here. Uh, let me just give you uh, the equivalent of what this is. So this is an ES6 uh, arrow function. Okay, This is how you write functions now in ES6. Uh, the equivalent would be if I did something like this. If I said var get products equals function, okay, um, that would be the exact same thing. Okay, And I know it's a little bit confusing, but this is where the these are the parameters. So if I was to say param1 and param2, then that is the equivalent of saying param1 and param2. Okay, and we don't need to put any return statement on here. You know, it, it's going to be the same thing whether it's return whatever. Okay, you, in either case, you can return something. Okay, so this is the equivalent of that. All right, the parameters go into here. Uh, if, there's, if there's no parameters, um, you can leave it like that. Or if there's only one parameter, you could just say param1 without the parentheses, and it would work just as fine. But we're going to keep those uh, that empty parentheses there, okay? Because there's none. So it's just a function, all right? And you'll learn this as, as you do it over and, and over again, okay? So we want to get products, and how do we do that? Well, we need to use the fetch library. So we're going to say fetch, and fetch expects a URL to be passed in. And if you're like thinking, well, how how am I supposed to know that, Mark? How, you can't just tell me what to do. Well, uh, here's the npm library, npm js, okay? what wg fetch and it actually has documentations on how to 
uh, on how to get it, okay, on how to use it, all right? And you can read the documentation to get the insights uh, that you're looking for. So we know what URL it is because we just looked it up. So HTTP localhost 3004 slash product, okay? That was the right URL. And fetch uses um, a promise system here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say dot then, okay? So stay with me here. So the, the, the dot then, oh, let me change this. No, this is right. JavaScript, do they have an ES6 in here? Maybe we should get an, uh, an ES6. Um, it just, it's not giving me enough colors. I don't like it. Let's get an ES6 uh, package. Let's go to the extension manager. ES6, ESX files, transform. I just kind of want a, uh, a hint, a linter, something that like makes it look nice. I don't want to auto compile. ES6. We'll come back to this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, feel free to look one up if you want. I just wanted some more colors than I'm getting, but uh, it's fine. So uh, this dot then. Okay, when fetch does its thing, it's going to call the dot then. So, you know, this is being attached to this. We could not write code here. We could not do anything like this, okay? I just made it go down one line, you know. Technically, it's being chained like that. Does that make sense? It's being chained to whatever fetch is returning. But I brought it down here so we have more code space. Um, so, so dot then. So, it's going to send us the response. This is kind of, kind of like working with an API, okay? This is the response that we're getting from the server. Uh, if it was successful or if it was a failure. Okay, and how can we see what we're getting? Well, all we have to do is uh, call the JSON on it. So let's console.log response.json. Okay, we're going to call the JSON function, which is going to take the response and convert it into JSON. Now, none of this is going to run yet because we haven't actually called it. So first things first is we need to export the class. So export default HTTP service. Uh, if you're uh, familiar with the old way of working with uh, JavaScript and Node, you would do module.exports equals, you know, whatever. In our case, uh, with ES6, it's export default, the default export for this file, and we're going to export this class. Okay? So how do we use it? Well, let's go to our app.js, and let's just import that service. So let's import, and we're going to say, what do we want to import? We're going to say h ttp service and we're going to say from and it's going to be we're in the app.js so we need to go up a directory so dot dot and then services slash http dash service so we're going to import the class all right and the next thing we're going to do that we want to do is we just want to get it to, to load okay so what we can do and this is a react this is uh, a react constructor here we're going to go in here and create a constructor, like so. And one thing I don't like here is how my spacing is being set up. I'm going to change this from spaces to tab size. And let's see if we can get everything. It just really wants to be a pain, doesn't it? Tab size, spaces. I want these, when I indent, not to be indented so much. Tab spaces, how about if we tab, tab size one, let's try that first. It is really not uh, working with us here. There we go. Okay, constructor. And we're gonna talk about this later, but we're gonna pass props in here, okay? The, the important thing to understand right now is that uh, constructor is gonna be the very first thing that's called when um, when this class loads, and this is uh, this is part React, part ES6. It's calling this constructor uh, the moment that this component loads. Okay, and uh, we're going to oh, these tabs. How about eight? I think eight's a better size for tabs. Eight. All right, let's try that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we'll figure this out. Um, eight, huh? Six. Maybe six is the lucky number. I'm just trying to make it equal to what came with the template file, so it's 
it's at least better. Ah. Really back to four? Okay, I guess four is what we're gonna do. So in the constructor here, all we wanna do is we wanna call this HTTP service, okay? We wanna get it up and running. So first things first, let's actually create the service itself. So I'm gonna create a variable or a constant over here, okay? And we're gonna say uh, const and it's gonna be HTTP equals new HTTP service. Okay, we're going to create a new constant. Uh, a const means it can't be modified. There's only It can only be accessed, more or less, um, versus a var, which can be modified. And that's an ES6 thing as well. So we're going to create a new HTTP service. All right. And then in here, we, can, we first need to call the super constructor. We'll talk about this later. Uh, all we're trying to do right now is test that it's working. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're going to say http dot get products we're just going to call the get products function okay are you with me so far i know there's lots going on so let's go back to our http service so remember get products it's doing a fetch to this url and then it's waiting for the response and we're just printing the response to the log so what i should expect to have happen is when when our app just loads the browser, if I go to the console, it's going to print up a list of those three products. That's what I should see. It would mean that we've successfully loaded and we've successfully made a fetch. Okay. So uh, this should have auto compiled for us already. We just got to find our browser here. Uh, here we go. Command Alt J. Okay. Promise resolved. Okay, so I didn't. I don't think I print, printed the right thing completely correctly, but um, as you can see here, we do have three objects, which is really cool. You see what, do you see what we're doing here? I'm going to go over it one more time, what we're doing here. Okay, well, we do have those objects here in our console.log. And by the way, just by seeing that, you've, you're already leaps and bounds ahead. A lot of people who are learning on their own who don't get to learn these things. And a lot of courses out there, actually, will teach HTML and CSS, and, and you make some front-end things. Uh, but you never learn how to actually connect it to a server and download data, which is which is crucial. It's absolutely crucial. Uh, there's no good app, good website out there or web app that uh, that doesn't somehow talk to a server. So in our HTTP service, okay, we're doing a fetch. We're we're grabbing something from a server, okay, and on the response, all right, we're printing up the JSON here, okay, that we're getting back from the server. And then uh, we're just printing it to the log, and it's working. And of course, here in our app.js, this is our base app. That's actually the, the base component for our entire web app here with React. And so this constructor is called when the app first loads, this component first loads, and uh, HTTP get products is called. And so what we've successfully done is created our own service and imported from that service and are using it, which is really cool as well, too. And so I know it's a lot to take in, and we're going to call this video done. So we've got our we've got our HTTP service uh, ready. Uh, we're going to probably make some more changes to it uh, to to better help our application. Uh, and uh, things are looking good. We're actually communicating with the server, which is sometimes the first thing you actually want to build is the the services that connect with your server because you can't really build a true app until you have data to stuff in it. You could always put fake stuff in, but it's never reliable because it's never the real final stuff. So that's it for now. Mark Price at DevSlopes.com. Moving on and forward. Oh, <laughs> oh,